If there's one thing we've gained from the Transformer movies that a lot of people can agree on, it's being able to look at Transformers and their vehicle modes a little bit differently than we used to. For instance, we always assume that a police car is going to be an Autobot because it's a good guy's vehicle. But if a Decepticon is about deception, shouldn't they be the one making themselves into police cars? That is the idea behind Barricade from the 2007 movie line. We're going to be looking at a few of these movie figures, just the ones that are a little bit relevant with the new movie coming out. And Barricade is coming back in spite of, you know, dying on camera in one of the movies. But hey, let's just assume he managed to survive that. As you can see, done up very nicely. You see uh, Celine in the back, just in case you want the car model for once, and a decent job of replicating it. Cast in black plastic, black all over. Batman would love it. He is very much an all business style police car. A little bit of a uh, little bit of translucent plastic just to give us some decent windshields, some proper ones. Police with a lot of white paint and silver lettering. And then of course along the side, Tampa graphed on his uh, model, his uh, logo to punish and enslave. That was such a it was such a cool thing. It was like that alone, I think, is what gave him all the character that we needed to get from the evil cop car. Okay, six, four, three. Okay, that's a signature double play for a baseball fan. And along the side here, another Tampa graph. Police, Decepticon, 191865. Wow. It's been a while since I read it. Wow. Going back a ways there. Not sure Decepticons existed back then, but hey, whatever. Anyway, that aside, it is an exceptionally nice vehicle mode all the way around. And this is back when they were painting everything they could. You got another police there on the spoiler. You got the tail lights painted on. Got some extra translucent parts to get the uh, headlights as close as possible. Turn signals painted on. When's the last time you saw that included as a detail? Lots, lots of effort gone into it. And rolls quite well, so there is that. So what else can we do here? Well, not a whole lot of play value. He is a car, so rolling around is about all we can do, except if we can pull down that brush guard and pull the chunk of the engine block out. And we unfold this, flip this up, and hey, we've got ourselves a frenzy. Yeah, it's kind of, kind of borrowing Soundwave's gimmick in a way. And borrowing his minion. What, are, what am I talking about? But it was another cool little thing that we uh, got to experience from the first movie. And it's really cool that the Deluxe managed to keep that gimmick so well. So that was a really cool surprise. And it really made that toy like one of the more popular ones. Frenzy himself looking quite maniacal. Very bug-like in the mouth. And then, of course, the four eyes also... Uh, helping that appearance. Of course, he is an insect, technically. Six six arms and whatnot. So, articulation-wise, up and down, up and down at the shoulders, and then back and forth here at the knees. That's pretty much it. It's just a little accessory for him. Hard to call it an actual figure on its own. But it's a really cool thing to include. So, we can go ahead and tuck him back up, and with that, we can slot him back in into place. Oh, it's stuck. Don't be stuck. Don't be stuck. It's going to be... Oh, yep. Is it upside down? Is it upside down? It was upside down. <laughs> I'm a goofball. So, let's get into robot mode where hopefully I won't accidentally mess something up mid-transformation. Start back here by unpegging these from the sides all the way over and we're going to get into a little bit of uh, parts clashing together because you have to kind of let a few things cave in before you can pull them out in order. Because you got these little hooks up here that get stuck in the front sections. So those pull out to the side. We can go ahead and fold the legs down. Legs are going to double hinge over and find a nice little home right about there. Is that right? Yep, yeah, right about there. The legs themselves we're going to undo, fold down the ankles. Now the legs themselves are meant to be like a digit-to-grade situation. I'm not a fan of how it looks, but for the sake of being correct to model for now, we're going to leave them that way. 
split them apart here at the feet and then we can raise the hips up oh, oh hang on yeah we're gonna get there in a minute because there's a few little issues with this toy rotating that down I'm gonna go ahead and rotate this to the front so the details are pointed forward a little bit closer to the movie there raise those so we have our arms I'm trying to go slow here because I don't want to accidentally set off one of the gimmicks which is a little bit prone to be done in this toy. it's very very tricky very hair triggery mm. it's also an older toy so I'm going a little bit slow just again. yep there it went there it went it's trying to avoid it nope did not want to be avoided all right so raise that down give me the head Go. gotta push it down from the bottom raise those up that's going to give us our barricade in his full robot mode strangely enough a fairly like traditional styling as far as uh how barricades transformation is accomplished he is very much you know hood becomes the chest style robot though he does end up with a fairly different uh appearance from your standard transformer Let's see if i can the mental note if you haven't played with a toy in years don't try reviewing it while you're exhausted i apologize but we get to hammer straight through this so again he does have a strangely interesting look to him and it is classic and still very much into the movie's alien aesthetic that does of course include his face which is very menacing and wicked looking definitely not prowl this is definitely a decepticon this is where the twisted nature of the movie designs kind of uh gets in the way a little bit it's kind of hard to make out some of the detail if that gold paint wasn't uh highlighting the mouth area it'd be a little bit tricky to make out some of the parts so it's it's a signature look for him that they're completely meddling with in the new movie but hey it's barricade so at least we have that here in the robot mode he sticks to the mostly black color scheme but oh he does have some metallic purple and some extra hits of silver here and there showing through and luckily a little bit left over from the vehicle mode to keep things a little bit broken up he's still exceptionally dark in his color palette though i really wouldn't have minded some extra silver or even that gold a little bit more especially along areas like the top of his shoulders where there's a lot of detail but it's getting muddled in the sea of black and along the legs too the legs themselves again are the digit to grade style which means they're the backwards knee technically if you want to if you want to think of it that way but for the most part, uh, that does make his, his stances a little bit awkward. you also notice that he does have a strange stature to him in that there's his pelvis and it really wants that chest to go down, though the head itself is not really hinged for that. The head, strangely enough, is designed to go forward along the chest, and, that's, and you'll see why. The head itself rests on that plate that slots in on top of the hood in order to create the uh, the actual appearance of the chest. Now, that does mean that his head's always going to point forward, so if you want the, the pelvis pointed forward, if that's the natural look, he's going to be looking down the whole time. If not, he's very pelvis forward as a character. So it creates a very awkward stature for him. Also, if you notice during transformation, that section doesn't really lock together all that well, which is uh, a little bit strange here. I might have actually... Uh, have I accidentally uh, mistransformed it? Because it looks like there's some extra give in the hinge. It do not does not look like it, though. It does not look like it, though. Oh, well. I tried. I tried just to make sure. But beyond that, let's see. There are details I like. I like the big hands sculpted in. This big menacing hands. Oh, yeah. Well, that actually helps show them off. We'll get to that here in a bit. So, yeah. He's got these tiny digits. They're very menacing. And he does have a... At least a thumb articulation so he does have a little bit of interesting uh change up you stay stay put also feet have actual spikes that are actual independent parts to transform up that's really minor and really random i'm kind of surprised so yeah little things like that where uh they managed to get little bits of detail in so for articulation nothing in the neck huh <laughs> 
interesting there. There's a ball joint here if you want to adjust that kibble, but for the most part, leave it there. Ball joint in the arm, which doesn't go outward quite as far as I want. It's kind of cut for the transformation, so it does not have as much uh, mobility as I would be after for a robot. And there's also a hinge along the torso, which does give you more range of articulation, but it moves very easily during, uh, during attempts to pose it. He does have an elbow that goes up and down, as well as the aforementioned thumb articulation, as well as the hand coming up from the arm, which you can do just to separate it out from the kibble. I find it doesn't really make that big of a difference. Oh yeah, and then you have, uh, yeah, it still works over here. All that still works over here, it's just as well, but yeah, there's uh, something else. Jeez, will you just stay put? You notice there's a lot of problems with this toy thing staying put. The hinges here in the torso, this piece, and the gimmick in the arm, nothing stays put. We do have good hip joints. That's always a nice thing. Nothing in the waist, but we do have a rotation just above the knee. Yep, you digital grade legs, and you hear that nice ratchet in there. Ball joint at the ankle, so a little bit of range. Not as much tilt as I'd like, but hey, it's something. He's a little bit stiff. He's got a little bit of uh, problematic uh, articulation here and there, but for the most part, he's getting enough done to keep him interesting and be able to look menacing in poses. I do want to state, because of the cut in his ankle, the ball joint going forward, you do have to make sure that his weight is going back a little bit during your posing because he will fall forward very easily thanks to that ball joint cut. And yeah, as shown off, if I hit the switch, uh, unfortunately there is a... Uh, little bit of a goofy bit of uh, gimmick articulate gimmick here there's a switch on his forearm that when hit will launch his fist forward so you do have a old school style gimmick going on to him I would have preferred an accessory I mean outside of frenzy but hey it's something it's just problematic because it's such a hair trigger as you notice throughout the review I couldn't keep the thing on so that was always problematic for the toy that is Movie 2007 Barricade. I think he benefits a lot from being one of the early movie toys where they didn't bother overcomplicating the designs yet. He's still a fairly solid Transformer as a result. However, he is marred by things like the hinges in his torso and the spring-loaded arm, both refusing to stay in place as well as the uh, center lock for the waist uh, connecting to his torso. Which is unfortunate, because I like the design of the toy, I like the functionality of it. There's just too many things that need to hold in place better. Which is something of a letdown. Hopefully the next barricade gets that a little bit more correct.